This is Foundations of Math 30, uh, Chapter 2. It's called Borrowing Money, and we're going to look today specifically at 2.1, okay? Which is entitled Analyzing Loans. Now, it's important to note that Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 go together really well. Chapter 1 was investing money, and so we are in, in Chapter 1 we were putting money in to the bank or to some kind of, you know, bond or something, and it was making us interest. Because it was our money, we gave it to the bank, or gave it to a company, and we were getting interest. Now, when we loan money, or sorry, when the bank loans us money, we're taking a loan, that means that we have to pay the bank interest when we pay it back. And so uh, that's what this chapter is about, borrowing money. Very much the same. We're going to use some of the same formulas. We're going to use the TBM solver again in this section. It's going to be awesome. But it's very similar to Chapter 1. Borrowing money is very similar um, to investing money. Okay, Same sorts of uh, uh, equations and stuff. First thing we want to uh, learn about here, uh, you may have heard this term before, collateral. What is collateral? It's an asset of some sort, something that you already own, or maybe even something that you're borrowing money to buy, that's held as security against the repayment of a loan. And what this means is that the bank says, let's say you borrow money from a bank for a car. The bank might say, okay, we'll give you the money, but you have to pay it back. And if you don't pay it back, we're going to take the car, the asset. And so that is that that makes the bank feel a lot better about giving you money. It gives them security. Okay, So that's what a collateral is. All right. Now, we're going to take a look at an amortization table as well. This over here is a picture of an amortization table, okay, part of one. And in this particular example, we have this guy named Lars, okay, obviously he's a pretty cool dude there. He's got a pretty cool name. And uh, what Lars has done is he's taken $12,000, okay, he's borrowed $12,000 from the bank, and the bank says, hey, I'm going to charge you 5% interest, compounded monthly, and the collateral is going to be the... Um, it looks like a sea dew or something, a watercraft there, a sea dew. That's going to be the collateral, okay? So if you can't pay this off, 12000 bucks is going to buy for this fancy schmancy watercraft. Then the bank's going to take the watercraft, okay? That's the collateral. Now, an amortization table is kind of the long way, the paper and pencil way of mapping out exactly, uh, you know, what's happening to this loan that you're repaying back. So this right here, this column is the balance. You start off at, you know, month zero, owing $12,000. That's your balance. It's what you owe. And the first month, uh, in this case, the payment is $350. Now, how this works is that your payment doesn't change every month. It's the same. So you can plan and you can budget. What the bank does is they say, hey, we're going to take all of our interest first, and then whatever's left over is going to go to knock down the principal amount. Okay, so let me just explain that again. Let me unpack that a bit. Your payment is 350. The bank says we're going to charge you 5% over 12 months. So, uh, 0 0.05 divided by 12 is the amount of interest in that for each month. And so they take a look at the balance right here, and they multiply by this factor right here to get the interest for that month. So, on your first month payment, you pay 350. The calculated interest is 50 dollars. What's left over is the 300 dollars. And now that gets subtracted from what you owe. See, the $300 is actually what you're paying uh, onto your loan or paying back from the loan. The other 50 is a big fat thank you to the bank for giving you this 12,000 bucks in the first place. Now, what happens the next month is you have a smaller balance, right? And so a smaller balance times this right here gives you a little bit less interest that you have to pay, a little bit. And so whatever's left over, you're going to have a little bit more left over now to pay off you know, the loan. And so that's how a table works. And this continues on and on and on until the interest basically gets down to almost zero. And everything you're paying is paying off your actual balance. So it's a tricky way of the bank getting all of their interest early and then you having you know wait to the very end before you know you actually pay back the balance. Okay, that, That's just how they work. But we're going to use the uh, calculator, the TBM solver, as well to calculate this, and we won't have to do the paper and pencil method. Right, so with our TVM solver, N is going to be the number of payments, okay? And let's see, we've got monthly, 
for, in this example, let's see, where is it? Uh, for uh, how many years? Large negotiated loan payment. Okay, well, it doesn't actually, the question says how long will it take them to pay it off? So I guess we're going to solve for N, right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to, so we'll put that in zero just so we remember to come back to it. The interest rate we said was five uh, per year, right? The present value. Now, this is the initial loan, so 12000 The payment is three fifty, and we're going to use negative three fifty because that money is leaving. It's going out. The future value we want is zero, right? Payments per year, that's monthly, and it's also compounded monthly. So um, we're going to make this 12 as well, all right? And he's going to pay at the end of each month. Good. All right, so... Let's see what happens when we solve for N. Okay, N says 37.07. Now, remember, it's paid every month, so we're looking at about 37 months. A little bit over 37 months, pretty close to 37 months. So it looks like it'll take him just a little over three years to pay this loan off, okay, at 350 a month. And we can also, let's see, we can also figure out, um, so 350 times 37 would be approximately how much money is actually going to pay. So 350 times 37, 350 times 37, 12,950. So he borrowed 12,000 bucks right here. And he's actually paying 12,950. So the interest is 950 bucks here out of the whole thing. So all of these numbers here in the interest paid column, if you add up all those over the course of uh, you know the three three years, three plus years, it'll be 950 bucks. So let's do one more example. Example two from your textbook says this. Trina's employer loaned her 10,000 bucks at a fixed interest rate of 6% compounded annually to pay for college tuition and textbooks. The loan is to be repaid in a single payment on the maturity date, which is at the end of five years. So the the payments are basically, there are no regular payments. So we are just finding out how much she needs to repay here. Okay, borrowing 10,000 bucks. And um, a single loan payment, like I said, does not involve regular payments. So this one, we can really just use the uh, same formula that we used in, uh, in chapter one, I guess, right, of uh, finding out what this is going to be worth. So here's the, uh, the formula, and if we plug all the values in, 10,000 bucks, 6% uh, per period, which is per year, over five years, we, uh, she is going to owe 13,382.26. So the interest will be the difference between the 10,000 and this uh, total amount that she has to pay, 3,300 bucks, okay? Big fat thank you to the bank. There's three, th you know, three grand to, uh, to buy my textbooks for me. Thanks a lot. Look at her, look at how happy she is. She's saying, thank you, bank. You are awesome because I got to sit here and do work for four plus years because I had these textbooks and I get a shiny piece of paper that will make my life better. Awesome. Thank you. You are great. Like a halo, like an angel. All right, I said that was the last example, but I lied. I'm sorry I lied. Um, to me. You can find me. Okay, let's talk about a mortgage. We need to talk about a mortgage. Okay, you've all, I'm pretty sure you all know what a mortgage is. But it's a loan, usually for purchasing a house or some kind of real estate property, all right, where the real estate that's purchased is the collateral. So the bank says, yes, I'll give you 400000 bucks to buy a house, but if you can't pay it, boom, I get your house, okay? That's generally what happens, and there's all sorts of interest, blah, 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 blah. You need to make a down payment as well, okay? Pretty scary. Got a $400,000 house, you need forty grand. okay? Big deal. That is a big deal. You got to save up, okay, if you want to buy a house. In this case, 225,000 bucks, okay? So 10% uh, 10 of that is 22,500. And so, uh, sorry, 22,500 gets knocked off of this because you're paying that first. So 225 minus uh, 22,500, okay, is gonna give you what you actually owe. That's two hundred and two thousand and five hundred dollars. Okay, so that's actually what you owe. All right, and so if you want to find out how much each payment will be, you can use your TVM solver, noting that n is the number of payments. So 
let's go to the TBM solver here. Apps, finance, TBM solver. Okay. Um, how much will each payment be? Well, we are paying, let's see here. Where does it say balance? 20 years, monthly mortgage payments. So it's 20 times 12. Right, 240. Wow, you're smart. Interest rate, 3.75. Um, present value, 202500. Okay, it's Joe in the house. Uh, payment is what we are, yeah, what we're going to be searching for here, so we don't know what that is. Future value is going to be zero. Payments per year is 12, and it's compounded semi annually. So let's go to compounding. That's two times per year. And we will go alpha solve. And here's your payment $1,197. Uh, sorry, $1,197.55. That's going to be the payment, the answer for A. How much interest will Jose end up paying by the time he's paid off the loan? What you do is you take 240 and you multiply it by the payment and you subtract the original amount and that's the interest. Say that again. 240 times the payment minus the original loan amount here and you get the interest. All right. All right, so 240 payments of 1197.55 each gives us a grand total of 287,412. If you take away um, the original loan amount, then you get uh, 84,912, and that is the interest paid. So the answer for B, 84,000 bucks. Yeah, almost 85,000 bucks. That's that's what happens. You got to pay a little extra to get that money. Um, anyways, there's your answer for. Number four, and again, how to use the TVM solver, solver, apps, finance, TVM solver, and you can fill in what you need from this page here. All right, hope it works for you.